السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا وجعلني مباركا أينما كنت وأوصاني بالصلاة والزكاة ما دمت حيا وبرا بوالدتي ولم يجعلني جبارا شقيا والسلام علي يوم ولدت ويوم أموت ويوم أبعث حيا صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زرني علما Respected ulama ikram, elders, brothers and youngsters Indeed, it's a huge blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon all of us that He has made us human beings, the best of all the creations. Allah could have made us from the animals in the jungles, from the fishes in the ocean, from the birds in the sky. We could not have objected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of us filed a request. None of us wrote an application to Allah. Did Allah make us a human being? So we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gave us he made us the human beings, the most intellectual of his creation. Another great blessing of Allah, he gave us this kalima, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, in the lap of our mothers, without any sacrifice, without any request. If you think for a moment, there are hundreds of people who die every minute in different corners of the world. Majority of them die without saying La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And if they die in such a state, they are going to burn in hell forever and forever. They are doomed for eternity. Likewise, hundreds of babies are born in every minute in different corners of the world. Majority of them are born in non-Muslim houses. Allah knows best how long they're going to live in this world without the ni'mat of Islam. So Allah gave us this ni'mah. For this, we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another great blessing of Allah, He made us in the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The last nation to come on the face of this earth, but the first nation to enter Jannah on the day of judgment. For this also we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we know, we are passing through the month of December, as Mufti Saab mentioned. What date is today, the youngsters? What is the date today? 23rd of December. When do they celebrate the Christmas in this country? Raise your hand, raise your hand if you know the answer. Which date of December they celebrate Christmas? Yes, 25th. the 25th of December, that is going to be Monday. When is the new year? Yes. December? Which date? 30? First? How old are you? Six years, mashallah. December 31st, they say, is the new year because the 1st of January is coming. Now the question arises, as Muslims, we are believers, alhamdulillah, we come to the masjid, we pray salah, we believe in Allah. What do we have to do? Yes. Very good, mashallah. Listen to Allah's rule, mashallah. Who told you this? No one. No one, mashallah. Okay. So, we, how, how do we act? What do we do? Are we allowed to celebrate in Christmas, uh, participate in the activities of Christmas? Should we celebrate or we should not celebrate? If we should celebrate, why? If we cannot celebrate, why shouldn't we celebrate? Why shouldn't we have fun also? And what about the New Year's when the apple goes comes down in the city? Everybody is glued on their TV set, so people go all the way there. And then it's like it's a mess on the way back on the subways. Everybody's enjoying, so why not us? What's the concept that Muslims should have when one year comes to an end and the next year begins? So, inshallah, we'll try to cover these things uh, in today's setting. But before that, we want to talk about Jesus. What is the Arabic or Muslim name of Jesus? Raise your hand. Yes, Isa alayhi salam. Okay, the Christians call it Jesus. And we call him Isa alayhi salam. Who was he? Was he a regular man? Or was he a prophet? Was he a sahabi? Yes. 
He was a Prophet alayhi salam. He came before our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. So, in other words, he was the second last Prophet. The last Prophet is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, we're going to talk about the Islamic concept. How was he born? Who was his father? Who was his mother? And all these things. So, who were his grandparents? And is he still alive? Or is he under the ground? Or is he on the heavens? Was he crucified or not crucified? So all these things, inshallah, we'll try to discuss today. So we begin with the, the birth of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. There is a city by the name of Jerusalem. Anybody knows where it is? Raise your hand if you know. It's, very, it's talked about very much in the news nowadays. Jerusalem. Yes. No, no, it's, on, it's somewhere in the Middle East. Yes, Jeru yes. Yeah. A current day Israel you can say yes Originally and that's fine That's fine inshallah Because what we hear what we see That's the thing Originally and uh, I mean Technically speaking this is Palestine That's a different thing that they can take They have taken over Palestine now But it is part of Palestine Or Palestine as we say in English Okay. So Jerusalem Is the main city in that country it's a very very holy city for us muslims for christians also and for jews also allah mentions the area of that city in the quran subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa alladhi barakna hawla the rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is this quran is revealed upon him and we are being told about baitul maqdis what is baitul maqdis raise your hands is it a church? It is a city? Is it a masjid? Or was it, what is it? Any high school or school going kid other than the youngsters? What is Baytul Maqdas? Yes. It's a masjid. It's in Jerusalem. Okay? And that is in Palestine. Okay? So Baytul Maqdas, Allah mentions regarding Baytul Maqdas. Alladhi barakna hawla. That we have blessed the surrounding of that masjid. Meaning all the areas surrounding Baytul Maqdas, meaning Jerusalem, is blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rahmat of Allah descends upon that area, upon that city. So Jeruhi was, this, his grandparents used to live in this area, in Jerusalem. Okay? And who were the grandparents? Imran and Hanna. Imran was the grandfather and Hanna was the grandmother. They didn't have any child. Hanna used to cry to Allah, make dua to Allah, Oh Allah, give me a child. But they were growing up day by day. One day she saw a bird taking care of its baby. How, it, how all the animals take care of their baby. So a bird taking care of this baby in the open area of the house. And how the, board, the bird was fondling and playing around with the young. So eventually her desire came up. Jazbat ubhar gaye. And she cried and she made dua to Allah that as if, if this can happen, you are also capable of giving me a child. Allah accepted her dua and she got a child in a womb. In other words, she became pregnant. Then she made a vow to Allah to make the shukr of Allah to express his her gratitude. She make a vow. She made a vow to Allah. Qasam khai unhone ya mannat mani qasam ni unhone mannat mani kya mannat mani? O Allah, muharran. The Quran uses the word muharran. When this child comes out, I will free this child. I will dedicate this child for what? For Baytul Maqdis. Like today, somebody is the khadim of the masjid. He takes care of the masjid. Sometimes even he lives in the room besides the masjid. So you see him 18 hours out of the 24 hours. His work is only doing the khidmat of the masjid. So this was the wow. This was the mannat. I will dedicate my child for the khidmat of the masjid. There is Baytul Maqdas. Now, before the child was born, the father passed away. Meaning Imran, radiallahu an passed away. Now... The child that comes in, that, in, this, in this world is an orphan. But when the child was delivered, the mother was assuming, was expecting that this would be a boy. Because who does the khidmat of the masjid? Male or female? Male. Look, Allah made the system such since Adam alayhi salam that men do the khidmat of the masjid, not the women folk. So how could a woman be dedicated to do and live khid khidmat of the masjid and live in the masjid? Eventually when the child was delivered, it was a girl. 
That's why Allah mentions the conversation of the mother, grandmother of Isa alayhi salam in the Quran. That she was amazed. Oh Allah, this is a boy. I wasn't expecting this. How can, how can now my mannat be fulfilled? My vow be fulfilled? But alhamdulillah, she took care of the girl. The name given to the girl was, anybody knows? The elders? Yeah, oh, sorry, yes. Maryam alayhi salam. Very good. We say Maryam radiallahu anha also. We say Maryam alayhi salam also. Now, alayhi salam or alayhi salam is used for whom? For prophets. She wasn't a prophet. But still out of respect, we say alayhi salam and we also say radiallahu anha. So both are used. But we should keep in mind she wasn't a prophet. This is only out of respect. So now Maryam radiallahu anha was growing up. Now, when she reached the age of maybe 9, 10, 12, something like this, she, she, she'd made the differentiation between right and wrong, good and bad. Now, this was the time to fulfill the oath, to fulfill the vow. Mannat pura karne ka waqt gaya. What was the vow and the oath? I just mentioned two minutes ago. Yes. She would be dedicated for what? To the masjid. Very good. To the masjid. For Baytul Maqdis. Okay. So, now this was the time to give over the, give over the responsibility of Maryam radiallahu anha to someone else. Allah still accepted her. She was a girl, but alhamdulillah, Allah still accepted her. Now, when she was brought to Baytul Maqdis, there were many khadims. There were many uh, servants of Baytul Maqdis. Many pious people. Now, they started fighting with each other. They started disagreeing with each other. One said, I will take the responsibility of Maryam alayhi salam. The other said, I will take the responsibility of Maryam. Because she was a blessed child. She was a special child. Her mother had made this wow while she was in the womb. One was the uncle of Maryam alayhi salam also. Meaning her mother's brother. Anybody knows who's who's, what was his name? He was a very, he was a very famous prophet. Zakaria alayhi salam. And Zakaria alayhi salam had no child until then. He also didn't have a child and he was like growing up. So now Zakaria alayhi salam said, I'm the mamu, I'm the uncle. I am more, I have more right upon Maryam alayhi salam. But they said, no, we will take it, we will take it. Eventually Allah revealed in the Quran that you should take lots. You should take out lots. Quran dazi karo. How can the lots be taken out? Like for example, you have a bowl and you have 10 people, but you don't know who is, who is supposed to be chosen for this work. So you write the name of all the 10 people of this, on different pieces of paper. You put it on the bowl, you shake it, and you take out one name. We do like this, right? So Allah said, draw lots. Now how the lots would be drawn? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran the pens, the pens that they had. In those days there were no printing presses, no printers. They used to write the Torah, the book of Musa alayhi salam with hand, with the qalam, with the pen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, take out your pens and throw it in the river. The same pens with which you write Torah. And now if you throw something in the water, and for example the water is flowing this way from right towards the left and you throw the pen will the pen go towards left or would it go towards the right if the water is flowing like this the current is like this would the object go like this or would it go the other way around it will, it will go towards the current good towards the current of the river or the sea so but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said whoever's pen goes against the current he will get the responsibility of Maryam alayhi salam so now everybody put their pens in the water and the pen of Zakaria alayhi salam went against the current by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Zakaria won in other words. He got the responsibility of Maryam radiallahu anha. Now he dedicated a room in the masjid. For example, this is a door and it opens up in another room. He dedicated a room for Maryam alayhi salam. Allah uses the word Quran, mihrab. Now mihrab could be this mihrab also where the imam stands or the mihrab could be a dedicated room also. Both the Mufassirin have mentioned both translations. It could be anything. And in the morning, Zakaria alayhi salam would bring Maryam from his house. Let her stay in this room for the whole day. 
if any responsibility of cleaning the room or cleaning the masjid was given to her, she would do it. She would go back in the room. And at night, Zakaria salam would take her back home. And she would sleep in the house of Zakaria alayhi salam. Okay, that was the only reason, the, the only responsibility she had because her mother dedicated her for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how it was happening. And when Zakaria alayhi salam used to leave, he was afraid that somebody might harm Maryam alayhi salam. So he would lock the door from outside so nobody would enter. And he would have the key to the door. And when he would come back, then he would unlock Maryam alayhi salam. One day Allah says in the Quran, as usual, he locked her and he opened up the door and he came and she was eating fruits. And those fruits were of the season. For example, we will not find mangoes in this season. But she was eating, she was eating, she was eating mangoes in December, in other words. Okay. In this season, we might not find some other some specific fruit. But she was eating of the season fruits that were not available in the market. They didn't have shipping companies at that time. So where did it come from? Maria Zakaria alayhi salam asked Maryam alayhi salam, Anna laki hadha. Where did you get this from? The reply of Maryam alayhi salam was, Qalat huwa min indillah. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah... In other words, she was so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that off the season fruits, with a closed locked door, Allah would allow the fruits to reach her and she would eat from the fruits. Okay. This was the status and the caliber of Maryam alayhi salam, the mother of Isa alayhi salam, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she started growing up and the Mufassireen tell us her growing was very fast. Okay. Mufti Shafi sahab rahmatullah alayhi has written in his tafsir that a human being, he grows as much as he grows in one year, Maryam radiallahu anha used to grow in one day. This was the speed with which she was growing up. So now eventually one day as usual, she went towards the east to take care of something. When she went towards the east, there was no, no person there, nobody around. Jibreel alayhi salam came in the form of a human being like me and you. And she, he came very near to Maryam alayhi salam. Maryam alayhi salam got afraid. She backed off. And she says in the Quran, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says more or less her nearest meaning that, I mean, no, no, no male has ever touched me because she had no male has ever touched her and she hadn't spoken to a strange man yet in her life because usually she was in the masjid. So she backed off. She was afraid. She was worried. That who are you? Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No male has ever touched me. And I have not spoken to a strange man yet. Why are you here? Why are you in other words near me? In other words she got afraid. So Jibreel alayhi salam told her that look I am the angel of Allah. Allah has sent me in the form of a human being in front of you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give you a child. She wasn't married yet. She used to live in the masjid. So Maria Rabbi Jibreel Ali Salam said, Allah wants to give you a child. This is easy for Allah. This is what Allah wants. And your child would be a nishani, would be a sign until the day of judgment. So now Maria Ali Salam replied, how can I have a child? The system of Allah is that a, a, bo a man and a woman should get married. Then Allah gives them a child. But I have, I'm not married yet. I have, never, I have never met or spoken to a strange man yet. So how can Allah give me a child? So Jibreel alayhi salam said, this is easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Getting married is, is a requirement of this dunya. If Allah wants, Allah can give a child to, without a father, without a mother. Now Isa alayhi salam was born without a father. Because Maryam alayhi salam, the mother was not married. But that there was one child in the world that was born without the father and without the mother. Who was that? Yes. Adam alayhi salam. Allah did not make his parents. The structure was made and the spirit was blown in it. And Adam alayhi salam came into existence. So no father, no mother. Isa alayhi salam, no father, only mother. So Allah is capable of this. So Jabir alayhi salam said the same thing to Maryam, the mother of uh, Isa alayhi salam. And then he blew on Maryam alayhi salam. Because of that blowing, she became pregnant. Allah put the child in the womb. 
and she didn't have to wait for nine months as regularly a sister or a woman waits for nine months. In a, maybe in a matter of days, Isa alayhi salam was born. Okay. So now when it was the time of the birth of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, now for example if today, if a woman has a child without a husband, people will, people will curse her, people will say bad things to her. Then how can this happen? So Maria alayhi salam was afraid of this. She went nine miles away from Baytul from Bayt Maqdis, the masjid in which she used to live. And the city was named, name of the city was Bethlehem. That city is still today in Palestine. And in Arabic, we call it Baytul Laham. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was going on Isra and Mi'raj, Jibreel alayhi salam told him to stop there. He stopped there, he prayed two rakat nafil, and then Jibreel alayhi salam asked him, do you know what this place is? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, no, I don't know. He said, this is Baytul Laham, the birthplace of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. So now, Maryam alayhi salam goes there, she wishes, I wish I would have died. Just like that, she wished that I would have died. So, but Jibreel alayhi salam came again from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this time he was standing a little far away, not so near as the last time. And then he said, Be patient, be calm. Okay? The help of Allah is with you. And Allah started a stream of water beneath where Maryam alayhi salam was sitting. And in the shade of the tree where Maryam alayhi salam was sitting under, Allah put fresh ripe dates. So she can eat from the dates and she can drink from the water. Eventually, uh, uh, eventually Isa alayhi salam was born. She delivered Isa alayhi salam. Now it was time to return home. But now if she returns home and people ask her the question, I mean, whose child is this? Where did you get this child? You never married. So now she was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you should not reply, you should zip it as we say in English. Whenever somebody asks you a question, don't say anything. And tell them that I am fasting. I am doing what? I am fasting. Today when we fast in Ramadan, what are the things we cannot do? Raise your hands. Yes. We cannot eat. What else? You cannot drink okay but in those days you can fast of talking also you don't talk from fajr all the way till maghrib so they had this form of fasting also ye ibadat ki ek surat thi us zamane ke andar ke log chup rehne ka roza rakhte the to maryam alayhi salam ko kaha gaya ke jab tumse koi puche ke bhai ye khuda na khasta kiska bachcha hai tum to tumhari maa aur tumhare maa aur baap to aise kharab nahi the to tum jawab dena ke maine chup ka roza rakha hua hai when somebody would ask you a question, you tell, you give them the reply, I cannot answer. I am fasting. If you want to ask a question, ask this baby that is, that is there in my hands, that is there in the cradle. Okay. So when Maryam salam was walking back towards Baytul Maqdus, her home, her room in the masjid, people started asking a question. Okay. Oh, sister of Harun, this, this is not Harun salam, this is a, 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 a pious person Harun. O sister of Harun, Ya Ukhta Harun, Ma kana abu ki mara asawiyun, Wa ma kanat ummu ki baghiyya. More or less meaning in English, O sister of Harun, Your father wasn't an evil man, And your mother wasn't an evil woman. So what have you done? You come from a pious, From the progeny of a pious parents. Tum to nek or ma baap ki aulad ho. Tum ne ye kya amal kar diya khuda na khasta? This was the question of the people of Bethlehem, Or of the people of Jerusalem. So Maryam alayhi salam, did not reply. She pointed towards uh, Isa alayhi salam, her son. Alah gave the tongue to Isa alayhi salam. She was a baby of maybe one or two days old, not even one or two years, one or two days old, but he started speaking. What did he speak? Inni Abdullah. I am the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Main Allah ka banda hoon. Aata niyal kitab. Allah has given me the book. What was the name? What is the name of the book that was given to Isa alayhi salam? Raise your hands. Injil. Okay. In English we call it. What do the Christians follow? 
Bible. Okay? So he was given the Bible. So he says, Ata niyal kitab. Allah has given me the book. Allah ne mujhe kitab di hai. Wajalani nabiya. And Allah has made me a prophet. Allah ne mujhe nabi banaya hai. Wajalani mubarakan. And Allah has made. Aina ma kuntu. Allah has made me blessed wherever I am. Meaning the rahmat, the mercy of Allah is always with me. Allah ne mujhe kitab di aur nabi banaya aur Allah ne mujhe mubarak banaya hai. Mere saath Allah pa ki rahmat aur barakat hai jahan bhi main hu. وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّا He is still talking. And Allah has commanded me, has advised me to establish salah and to give zakat. Allah نے مجھے حکم دیا کہ نماز قائم کرو اور اللہ کے راستے کے اندر خرچ کرو. وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَتِي And Allah has told me to be nice with my mother. To give good treatment to my mother. میرے اللہ پاک نے مجھے اپنی ماں کے ساتھ اچھا سلوک کرنے کو کہا ہے. A boy, only one or two years old, is saying all these things. وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا اللہ نے مجھے جبار ظلم کرنے والا درشت روح سختی سے بات کرنے والا جو ہے وہ نہیں بنایا وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيَّ يَوْمَ وُلِدْتُ Allah has not made me an oppressor on an ill-fated person وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيَّ The peace and the blessings of Allah are upon me the day I was born وَيَوْمَ أَمُوتُ The day I will die وَيَوْمَ أُبْعَثُ حَيَّا And the day I will be resurrected again Allah ki salamti hai mere upar jis din mein pehda hua jis din mera intiqal hooga yani is dunia se mein jaoon ga aur jis din mujhe dubara uthaya jaye ga یہ باتیں عیسیٰ علیہ السلام نے جب وہ ایک یا دو دن کے تھے اس وقت اللہ پاک کی حکم سے جو ہے وہ فرمائی اللہ gave him the power and he spoke this much so when he spoke this much the people of the city were speechless they had nothing to say this was a miracle from Allah سبحانہ وتعالی that a child in the cradle is speaking so now Maryam was relieved رضی اللہ عنہ Maryam علیہ السلام مبرہ ہو گئی ان پہ کوئی تحمد کوئی الزام نہیں لگا بچے نے صداقت سے گواہی دے دی the boy the son was a witness that my mother has not done anything wrong so now again Maryam علیہ السلام with Isa علیہ السلام started living happily the mother passed away Isa علیہ السلام grew up and Allah سبحانہ وتعالی eventually made Isa علیہ السلام the prophet and Allah gave at least five miracles to Isa alayhi salam. Five special things that in those days nobody was able to do. Anybody knows any one or two of those miracles what he was capable of doing? Yes. Powers. What? Powers. There were, there were powers, yes. He had special powers. You know what those powers were? Okay. Bade hazrat mein se koi? Unke mu'ajizat mein se kya kya cheez hai What were the special things he was given? If somebody was a was a was a blind born blind, you know, if a person loses eyesight while he is while he is alive, sometimes science comes up with a solution. But somebody that's born blind, nobody can cure him. So whoever was born blind with the permission of Allah, Isa Ali Salam would cure him, and he would get his eyesight back. جو پیدائشی اندھے ہوتے تھے اللہ کے حکم سے عیسیٰ علیہ السلام ان کی بینائی لوٹا دیتے تھے what was the other miracle of عیسیٰ علیہ السلام very good dead person somebody was in his grave he passed 10 years ago you take him if عیسیٰ علیہ السلام was alive today for example you take him to the cemetery he will do like this and the dead person will wake up literally he did like this Allah gave him the power so he would say to the dead person قُمْ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Stand with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the deceased would open up the grave and stand up. This was the power Allah gave to Isa alayhi salam. Anything else? What else? Make them dead? Oh, maybe he made them dead also again. Yes. Ha, leper, leprosy. Kor ka marz jisko kehte hain that was incurable. Isa alayhi salam would just wipe his hand on it and with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the disease was cured okay. three miracles what else anybody knows you know what you eat in your home and what you left in your home you very good Gee. his hands were shining his hands were shining and as what this brother also mentioned if today for example you just came to Darussunnah Masjid for the youth program if Isa alayhi salam would there he would tell you what you ate for lunch and he would also tell you what's there in your refrigerator back home. 
didn't have any refrigerators at that time but he knew what people hid inside the houses and what they ate in the last lunch or dinner Allah gave him so much powers okay? so bringing the dead from life uh, curing leprosy born blind people and uh, with the permission of Allah he would cure them and likewise he can tell you what you ate last time and what is hidden in your house so these were some of the miracles mu'jizat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Isa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam started giving da'wat to the people started calling them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now one thing we should keep in mind all the prophets that came from Adam alayhi salam till Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam they had the same religion as we have what was that religion Islam okay now this is just the names of the people okay and Quran also uses these uses these names but the religion was Islam it changed from time to time like the religion the code of light that was given to Musa alayhi salam changed a little bit with Isa alayhi salam and what the people of Isa alayhi salam got is not the same what we got today through the Quran. So the religion was the same but Allah based on the need of the time, zarurat ke mutabik, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the changes in that, in that code of life. Okay? That's why some of the things that were mentioned in Torah are also mentioned in the Bible. Some of the things that are mentioned in the Bible are also mentioned in the Quran. Some of the things that are mentioned in the Torah are also mentioned in the Quran. Some of the things that are mentioned in Zabur are also part of the Quran. So, in other words, the religion is the same, but based on the need, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to change the command. Like in previous nations, like today if you go to the bathroom and the drops of urine come on your clothing, on your shirt or on your pant, what do you do? You just take it off and throw it in the garbage or you wash it? In those days, if your shirt would become... Uh, impure because of urine drops you will have to cut that part you cannot wash it this was their sharia this was their way of life they wanted to give sadaqa today for example we do qurbani we sacrifice the animals okay and if they wanted to sacrifice the animals they would throw the animals keep the animals at a place a fire would come from the sky and burn it and it would vanish so this was the sign that the sadaqah, the sacrifice is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the commands of Allah used to change. The religion is the same. The commands of Allah change based on the need of the time. Okay? In When For Henry Ford, the founder of the Ford Motor Company, when he founded the car, based on whatever resources he had, he made that car. But as soon as time passed, the situation changed. The car that is being made by the Ford company right now is not the same car that was made by Henry Ford who founded the company. Okay? Now you have driverless cars that, drives by, that drive by themselves. Now you have the car, you just program it. They use it in California. You just program it. It goes wherever you need to go through the GPS. It senses where the traffic is and puts the brake also and again puts the speed also. I mean gives the speed also. So, based on time, things changed. Five or maybe like uh, seven, eight years ago, we didn't have these smartphones. We have those regular uh, generic phones. And if today somebody wants to use that phone, he won't be able to use it because the frequencies have changed. So, likewise, likewise, the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also changed a little bit based on time. So, Musa alayhi salam also brought Islam. Isa alayhi salam also brought Islam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam also brought Islam. So, he started calling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Towards the oneness of Allah that Allah is alone. And I am the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now the area where he was sent, these were Jewish people. Okay? And this was the Roman Empire. And the governor of the Roman Empire, his station was in Damascus, which is in current day Syria. Jerusalem was controlled by Damascus, and this is where the place of the governor was. So, and Isa alayhi salam was sent upon the Jews. Now, for some reason, now I'm not criticizing the Jews here. For some reason, Jews did not like Isa alayhi salam. And they complained to the governor, and they made a lie that Isa alayhi salam would overthrow you. Jude bola ke Isa alayhi salam tumhaye takhte ko ulad denge. Isa alayhi salam will take away ma this now this this governor was an idol worshipper. He wasn't a Jewish person, but the population was Jewish. Even if you open up the books of history, 
And even English, English authors have mentioned this. That Isa alayhi salam, the people surrounding him were originally Jewish people. And they complained to the governor of Damascus, of the meaning the deput deputy of the Roman Empire at that time. So they made a lie to the governor that you have to take care of Isa alayhi salam. If you don't take care of him, he will overthrow you also. Tumara bhi takhta ulat denge. And he will be a source of, and he will affect your religion of idol worship also. So for some reason, he accepted the lies of the Jews, the governor. And he deployed a group of police that you should go start searching for Isa alayhi salam. And once you get him, bring him to me. Allah revealed, sent the wahi on Isa alayhi salam and he was told that this group of people have been made and they are looking for you. Isa alayhi salam came in Baytul Maqdas okay, and gathered all his students or most of his followers and disciples, Hawariin, the word Hawariin is used in the Quran, his helpers, his followers, his disciples. And he gave them the last advice that, look, I might not live anymore. Okay? I might not be there in you. But you keep this effort of da'wat alive. Call people towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and call people towards, I mean, the way of Islam and all these things. Do you make a promise? They made a promise to Isa alayhi salam. Then somehow, what we call the FBI today or the CIA, they found out, the spy agencies of that time found out where Isa alayhi salam was hiding. Nobody had the information, but somebody leaked it. So now the spy agencies started coming towards Baytul Maqdis. Allah again informed Isa alayhi salam because the prophets have direct connection with Allah. They don't need a phone. They don't need a satellite or anything. Allah just sends Jibreel alayhi salam and Allah informs them. And what's, and what's the speed of Jibreel alayhi salam? Much faster than the signals of this phone. The, 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 the narrations tell us when Yusuf alayhi salam was thrown in the well, for example, you're standing on the bank of the well and somebody pushes you and you start falling down. Before Yusuf alayhi salam could land on the surface of the well, Jibreel alayhi salam was there to save him. So this is the speed of Jibreel alayhi salam. So Allah revealed upon Isa alayhi salam that the, spy, the spies are coming, they know where you are hidden. Eventually he sent all his Hawariyin, his followers away, that now leave me alone. And he locked himself in the room. Nobody was inside. The person entered Baytul Maqdas, one spy. He entered Baytul Maqdas, he started, started searching room to room to room. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the permission of Allah, Allah uplifted Isa alayhi salam towards the heavens. Allah Paak ke hukum se, Allah Paak ne asmano ki taraf utha liya. Now when that person left Baytul Maqdas, the police was standing outside. He didn't find Isa alayhi salam. But when he left, before leaving, Allah changed his face and body to the changed face and body of Isa alayhi salam. So now when he left, the police caught him. For example, if the police is looking for me and he is inside the room and he leaves the room and he looks like me, people will catch him. Okay? They won't listen to him. He started shouting that I am not Isa, I am your man, I am the spy you had sent me inside, but didn't listen to him because he was resembling Isa alayhi salam. Okay? And the crucifixion that the Christians tell us that Isa alayhi salam was put on the cross and his body was nailed, this was this person. Isa alayhi salam wasn't crucified in the first place. And he is still alive in the heavens. And he's not alive in soul, he's alive with soul and body. This is this is our this is our belief, this is our aqeedah of, of the believers of the Muslims that Isa alayhi salam is alive. And Allah will once again send Isa alayhi salam. The youngsters raise your hand. You know when Isa alayhi salam will come? Any idea? In 2025 or 2050? Yes, well, you were saying something. Say it. I'm just giving an example. Very good. He will come to fight the Jal. Meaning, this is these are the signs of the Day of Judgment. There are certain minor signs, and there are ten major signs of the Day of Judgment. One of the major signs is the Jal will come out, and when it will be the last days of the Jal, Allah will send down Isa alayhi salam. So, if because our colleagues in the school are also Christian, our neighbors are also Christian. 
Sometimes our neighbors are Jews. The, peop- the, peop- the place where we work are Christians and Jews. So if they ask us, what is your belief regarding Isa alayhi salam? Me and you should know. What is our belief regarding Isa alayhi salam? And you know, there, are, there are very good points to give dawah to the, to the Christians. That look, we respect Isa alayhi salam more than you respect. We Muslims respect Isa alayhi salam more than the Christians respect Jesus. How? If the Christians don't believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if the Christians don't believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are still considered Christians. اگر عیسائی آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو نبی نہیں مانے تب بھی وہ عیسائی کہلاتے ہیں لیکن اگر ہم عیسیٰ علیہ السلام کو نبی نہیں مانے تو ہم کافر ہو جاتے ہیں یہ اس سے زیادہ عزت دینا ہے کہ نہیں ہے ہم تو عیسائیوں سے زیادہ عیسیٰ علیہ السلام کو جو ہے وہ عزت دیتے ہیں وی شوڈ ٹیل دس ٹو دا کرسچنز وین دے آر ان اے گڈ موڈ وین دے آر ٹاکنگ ٹو ایز دیٹ لک وی کرسچینٹی ڈزل ٹین یو ٹو بلیو ان محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم بٹ اسلام ٹیلز اس ٹو بلیو ان محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ عیسا علیہ السلام اینڈ موسا علیہ السلام اف وی ڈینائی دا پروفٹ آف پروفٹ ہڈ آف عیسا علیہ السلام وی مائٹ لیو دا سرکل آف اسلام اینڈ وی کین ٹیل دس ٹو دا جوز آلسو That Judaism doesn't tell you to believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but Islam tells us to believe in Musa alayhi salam. If we don't believe in Musa alayhi salam as a prophet, we would leave the circle of Islam. So this is a very good point of Dawat, that Islam respects and reveres these prophets more than the Jews and Christians do. Another good point of Dawat is the, the name of the mother of Isa alayhi salam. What is her name? Maryam. The name of the mother of Isa alayhi salam is mentioned by the name in the Quran. Allah has not mentioned any other woman by name in the Quran. Imra'atunu, Imra'at of Fir'aun. The, the, the woman of Fir'aun, the woman of Nuh alayhi salam. But Allah mentions Maryam alayhi salam. Wa Maryam abnata Imran allati. The, the name of Maryam also, the name of a father also. And the name... The number of the times the name of Maryam a.s. is mentioned in the Qur'an is far more the number of the times it is mentioned in the Bible. Jitni dafa Maryam a.s. ka lafz Qur'an mein maskoor hai, usse kam dafa Bible ke andar maskoor hai. Ye mein nahi keh raha, ye Christians kehte hai. You can look up the National Geographic magazine, magazine, 2015 December edition. Go on Google and type National Geographic 2015 December, Maryam, write Maryam, M-A-R-Y-A-M, it will pull up the article. In that article, Maureen Orth, an American journalist and an author, she's a woman, she wrote an article and these are her words. And she writes Maryam correctly also, mashallah. She, she did the correct spelling, M-A-R-Y-A-M, Y-A-M, and these are her words. That the mention of Maryam is more in the Quran as compared to the mention of Mary in the Bible. Americans and Christians are saying this. So this is another sign that we respect Maryam alayhi salam or radiyallahu anha more than what the Christians respect Maryam alayhi salam or Mary. So these are the points of da'wah that we need to learn. And when we have our friends, we can convey it to them. This way they will be attracted towards Islam. So anyway, Isa alayhi salam was lifted towards the heaven. He is alive. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went in Isra and Mi'raj, Allah made him take Allah. He saw all the seven skies also. He, he saw the Jannat and the Jahannam, the paradise and the hellfire also. Allah made him see everything, the major part of the universe. There he met Isa alayhi salam. He met Isa alayhi salam on the second sky, on the second heaven. And he says Isa alayhi salam was of medium stature. The hadith says, Darmiyane qad ke the. He wasn't too long, he wasn't too short. And he was reddish, white in complexion. And his hair was combed so nicely as if he had just... Oh, sorry, sorry. The, the words of the narration are that his body was so... He, he, was, he, he, was, he was so handsome and the body was so clean as if he had just taken a bath. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentions regarding Isa alayhi salam. The ahadith mention when Dajjal will finish his days in the world. And this will be the, his last day on the face of this earth. Dajjal is the Antichrist. Okay. And Allah will give a lot of power to Dajjal. He will have Jannat, Paradise in one hand. And he will have Hellfire in one hand. 
and whoever he will say to the people I am your Lord I am Allah if those people who say you are not Allah he will pick up that person and put him in his hellfire in his hellfire on the left hand and again he will take out that person and say now you believe I am Allah and the, the, those people who will follow him meaning will become a kafir he will put those people in, the, in his jannah but that will just be an illusion as we say hallucination in English an illusion for a few moments for a, for a short amount of time in fact this will not be the reality so when Dajjal's time is come, come, about to come to an end Allah will send Isa salam to kill him nobody will be able to kill Dajjal except for Isa salam. so it is in certain narrations it is mentioned that it is the time of Fajr in certain narrations it is mentioned that it is the time of Asr he would come down resting his hands on the shoulders of two angels. He will come down from the sky. He will come on the, on the minar of a masjid. Most probably in, Damis in Damascus. And then when he will come, it comes in the narrations, medium stature, reddish white in complexion, hair beautifully combed as if he has just taken a bath. And when you have taken a bath, if you put your head like this, drops of water come. The hadith says, as if pearls will be coming down from his head and he will be wearing two cloths on him two clothing meaning in other words shirt and trousers and those will be light yellow in color and he will be wearing an armor also and when the door of the masjid will be open it will be time for fajr or asr salah mahdi radiallahu anhu would be the leader of the muslims at that time and the entire muslims of the world would be combined would be together un un uh, under one ruler some of them will be praying salah it will be time for fajr or asr and they are about to pray the salah start the jama'ah as we just had the salatul isha and mahdi radiallahu anhu would be moving on the musalla he would be the imam Iqama would be given, Azan would be given, Iqama would be given. Then Isa salam will open the door of the masjid. Mahdi radiallahu an with his eyes will fall on Isa salam. He will try to back off. And yes, as an elder comes, Imam Sahib says, you lead salah. So Mahdi radiallahu an will offer the musalla to Isa salam. Isa salam will say, no, you be the imam and I pray behind you. So a prophet is praying behind an ummati, a person from the nation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now the Fajr Salah or the Asr Salah would be read. And then again the door, now Isa alayhi salam will tell, tell Mahdi radiallahu an, you are the leader of the Muslims. My responsibility is to kill Dajjal, that's it, nothing else. So now the door of the masjid will be open and Dajjal will be standing right there. He would also have an idea that Isa alayhi salam is about to come. So now Isa alayhi salam will tell the people to make way. He will, sorry, he will see Dajjal. Dajjal will not see him. When the people from the middle will go away, for example, I'm sitting here, all of you are sitting here, and somebody's standing near the door, and I can't see him or he can't see me. So Isa alayhi salam will make way. Dajjal will see Isa alayhi salam and will start running. Because he knows that Isa alayhi salam will kill me. And Allah will give so much power to Isa alayhi salam wherever... His breath travels, non the non-believers will die just because of his breath. So now Isa salam will start following Dajjal. And eventually he will follow him. Allah, he will have the narration say he has two swords, flexible type of swords. And with those swords he will kill Dajjal at the gate of Lud, Babul Lud. The city of Lud is in Israel today. They still have those. Uh, somebody sent me the entire video uh, that uh, when you like today, when you enter a new city, they have the name. So they have the same name, Lud, the city where Dajjal will be killed by Isa alayhi salam. So this is how Isa alayhi salam will come down. When this time he will come down, he will live for another 40 years. And the time will be so prosperous. Itna tarakki ka zamana hoga or itna acha zamana hoga. The hadith says the time will be so good. It will be the best time after the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The world had never seen such a good time. Nobody will remain poor. Even if a rich person takes out zakat, there will be no one to accept zakat and sadaqah. Allah will make so much people so much affluent and so much rich. A pomegranate 
वन फ्रूट विल बी इनफ फॉर द होल फैमिली वन पोमोग्रेनेट एक अनार जो है वो पूरे खान पूरे घर के खाने के लिए काफ़ी होगा और वो अनार इतना बड़ा होगा हदीस में आता है कि उसके छिलके से कमरे की छत बनाई जा सकती है दैट पोमोग्रेनेट विल बी सो ह्यूज दैट दैट फील द स्किन ऑफ द पोमोग्रेनेट कैन बी यूज एज द रूफ ऑफ द रूम the ulama have compiled all these signs that will be there in the time of isa alaihi salam the milk of one goat will be enough for the whole family the milk of one cow will be enough for the whole tribe pure qabile ke liye ek gaay ka doodh kafi hoga such baraka will be there okay so in other words golden age the world has never seen this age since the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that was the best time and this will be the second best time 40 years he will live he will get married also and now he will die a natural death and now out of these 40 years the first 7 years will be so transparent that not a single person will have grudge or malice or envy for another person in his heart for 7 straight years sa pehle 7 saal tak kisi ke dil mein dusre ke liye na hasad hogi na bughz hogi na adawat hogi itna saaf sutra zamana hoga the whole world will be full of believers no non believers will be there all right? everybody will accept the dawat of isa alaihi salam in other words everybody will be obedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so imagine such a time okay? so now eventually after 7 years slowly slowly downfall will start again these 7 years of of the pinnacle now downfall is about to start isa alaihi salam will get married eventually it will be the time of his death and he will be buried anybody knows from the youngsters where Washington Memorial in Long Island a pine lawn or where will he be buried or in Damascus Madinah. in Madinatul Munawwara one sign where exactly in Madinatul Munawwara Madina has a graveyard also Madina has the cover the rose of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam also next to the rose in the rosa next to the cover of Abu Bakr and Umar radhiyallahu anhuma meaning near Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam one space is still there in that room of Aisha radhiyallahu anha until today and that space is designated for Sayyidina Isa alaihi salam okay so that will be his natural that he did not get married that at that time he will get married this time okay so these this is the islamic concept the quran is full of this imam sahib can further i mean because of the time frame we had i quickly moved so imam sahib inshallah can elaborate open up in front of you sometime with detail all these things so this is the concept of muslims regarding isa alaihi salam that he is alive with body and soul and he is in the heavens and at the time near the day of judgment one of the signs of the day of judgment that he will descend and he will kill the antichrist the jal time is up i'll wrap up in 5 6 minutes that why these celebrations that are coming should we celebrate these celebrations or not okay so now the thing is if we say not then what is the reason why we cannot celebrate anybody can tell me uh, just an idea yes very good this is the right thing because allah told us not to do it <laughs> So in easy terms, mashallah, he's saying the principal things. यानी मोटा मोटा जो जवाब होता है ना जो बड़े ही देते हैं वो माशाल्लाह ये दे रहे हैं. So in easy words, why are we not allowed to do this? इनके वाले साहब हैं इधर? His father is here. नहीं. Who did you come with? For with whom did you come to the masjid? With his dad. Oh, with his dad, mashallah. So he's your friend. He's your neighbor. Oh, he's your friend, and what is your name? No, no, I'm asking, what is your name? What's your name? What's your name? Okay, anyway, think and let me know, inshallah. <laughs> okay. Now the thing is that twenty uh, fifth of December is coming. Should we celebrate? Uh, uh, the birth of Jesus Christ or Isa alayhi salam new year is coming should we participate in these celebrations now there are two things to this look one is to respect the people with whom we are living 
One is to respect the religion of the people. Okay? We have to respect the Christians also. We have to respect the Jews also. We have to respect their beliefs. We have to respect the beliefs of other religions also, whether it be Hinduism, whether it be Buddhism. Allah says in the Quran that you should not curse the deities of the opposite religion. Otherwise, they will curse your deities. Quran mein Allah Paak farmaate hai, iska mafhoom hai ke dusre mazhab ke khudaon ko bura bhala mat kaho, warna wo tumare khuda ko bura bhala kahenge. So Islam tells us to respect other faiths also. When Muslims win a city in a battle, Quran is explicit. Do not touch the synagogues. Do not touch the churches. Do not touch, touch, touch the trees. Do not touch the women folk. Do not touch the children. جب مسلمان فاتحانہ انداز میں کسی شہر میں داخل ہو تو شریعت کہتی ہے کہ نہ سنگاک کو ہاتھ لگاؤ نہ جو ہے وہ چرچ کو ہاتھ لگاؤ نہ درختوں کو ہاتھ لگاؤ نہ بچوں کو ہاتھ لگاؤ نہ ان خواتین کو جو جنگ میں شریک نہیں ہوئی ہیں تو اسلام ٹیلز اس ٹو رسپیکٹ پیپل آف ادر فیت سو ایف دے آر سیلیبریٹنگ اٹ از دیئر کلچر اٹ از دیئر ریلیجن اٹس فائن وتھ اس وی ڈونٹ ڈس رسپیکٹ دیم ایف دے میٹ اس We can say happy holidays to them. We don't say happy Christmas. We wish them, we say happy holidays, okay? But we should not participate in it. Why shouldn't we participate in it? One logical answer, an easy answer is, do they participate in Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Azha with us? No. Do they come to the Mazr and pray Salah with us? No. Or they go to the slaughterhouse in the morning, read the first Jama'ah in Eid al-Azha and run to the slaughterhouse and do the Qurmani? No. But they respect us, right? When they know this is Eid, they say Happy Eid also sometimes, okay? And they say Happy Holidays to us. They say Happy Ramadan also to us, right? So they respect our religion. They respect our faith. We respect their faith. This is one thing. But we should not be celebrating or participating with them as they are celebrating and as they don't celebrate and participate with us, okay? Now this is one thing. Second thing is, why don't we participate? The reason is, Look, if you start doing something, you will start getting affected from that thing. If, for example, it's cold outside and you don't wear a jacket, maybe you can stand for one minute, two minutes, three minutes, then you'll start shivering, right? You will not be able to bear the cold. Okay? Even if you want to bear, you cannot because it's not in your control. So likewise, when you start participating in a culture of a religion, when you start participating in the rites of a religion, in the forms of worship of a religion, eventually that religion will affect you. That's why Islam says you should respect the culture of others, but don't participate in the festival of others. Okay? You'll start celebrating one day, you will have these thoughts that I am a Muslim. Am I on the right track or not? Or if the opposite person is on the right track or not? Okay. That's why we should stay back. Second, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna likulli qawmin eidun. That indeed for every religion, for e- sorry, indeed for every nation, there is a celebration. Wahaza eiduna, and our celebration is this. He gave this khutbah, he said this, in, at the time of Eid. When Muslims were celebrating Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. So, when what happened was in the narration of Anas radiallahu an, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came to Madinah al-Munawwara. And the kuffar used to celebrate two days in the year. Okay? Those were the Persian holidays. They used to go out of Makkah. Makkah would become empty. And they would encamp. And for two, three days they would sing also. They would have fun also. They would picnic also. They would eat also. Okay. Like people go out in long weekends today. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa asked them, what is this? They say, from Jahiliyyah, we used to celebrate these two things in Jahiliyyah. Also. Sorry, I'm talking about Madinatul Munawwara, not Makkatul Mukarramah. When he migrated to Madinatul Munawwara, the people were celebrating this. So he said, they said, in Jahiliyyah, we used to celebrate these two days. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah has swapped. Allah ne badal diye hai. Allah has swapped those days with two more days that are better than these two days. Jo un do dino se better hai. Eid al-Adha wa Eid al-Fitr. The day of Adha and the day of Fitr meaning the Eid that comes after Ramadan and the Eid that comes after in the, on the 10th of Zul Hijjah. So Muslims, we have only two celebrations. One is the Ramadan Eid, the Eid al-Fitr and the second is the Eid al-Adha. No other celebration we have. So we respect it, 
but we don't participate in it. Because if you participate, a time will come, slowly you will become like them. And this, if you become like them and you slowly go away from Islam, this is a huge loss. Because a person who dies as a non-Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forgive him. One thing. Second, this is as far as Christmas, Valentine's Day, Easter, Halloween, or whatever the days that are there in the year. New Year's Eve. Now this has maybe nothing to do with religion. Okay? You will say, why? One year is coming to an end and New Year is beginning. I was 12 years old. Now I'm 13 years old. I was 40. Now I became 41. So I should celebrate. Now I ask you a question. When you came out of your grave, you had a full span of 40, 50, 60 years, whatever Allah gave you. The more you are growing up, the more you are decreasing your time in this dunya. Am I right or not? The more we are growing up, the more we are losing our time. The day that passed today, will this ever come back in my life? No. No, it is gone. So I lost one day. <laughs> Though I am growing up, but my life is getting shorter day by day because I'm losing one day, one week, one year, two years, ten years. Okay? I am 43 years old. If I try to look back and say I go in the time machine and I become 30 years old, this cannot happen. Okay? I already lost 43 years of my life. Now whatever Allah knows best, how long is remaining, that is my life remaining. So you lost one year. In other words, one year is gone. So what's there to celebrate? There's nothing to celebrate. If I have $100 in my pocket and I lose those $100, Will I start jumping on the street that I, I lost one hundred dollars? People will say to Pagal ho gaya. He is insane. He lost one dollar, hundred dollars, and still he's jumping and waiting for the ball to come down. Okay, and he's uh, happy New Year and all these things. I'm not criticizing anyone. Somebody wants to do it, do it. But what should be the Islamic concept? What should be the Islamic mindset and perspective? We are losing one year of a life and this will never come back. This is nothing to celebrate. Rather, it's we should sit down and cry in front of Allah. Oh Allah, one year has passed away. I was not able to be good in this year. We should ask ourselves how many salahs we prayed, how many salahs we missed. How much were we obedient to Allah? How much were we disobedient to Allah? How much we listened to our parents? How much we disobeyed our parents? Okay? What did I achieve in this year? that I didn't achieve in the previous year. So we, sh we can, sure, we can make New Year resolutions. We should make New Year resolutions. But there is no celebration upon the finishing of a year because Islamically speaking, we have lost one year. So that's why the ulama tell us it's not appropriate, it's not munasib to participate in these celebrations. But rather, we should make dua to Allah that, Oh Allah, whatever life remains, allow us to be obedient to you and allow us to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So this is by and large. And look, we live in a country where you have freedom of religion. Not back in our countries also, we don't have so much freedom. If you, if you think sincerely, the areas where me and you come from, we don't have so much freedom of religion as we have in this country. So we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? History tells us, if we don't utilize the freedom, a time will come, Allah will make these same people against us. Okay? What's happening in the countries around the world? You know, I don't need to take names. The purpose is not to blame anyone. So we have to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to stick to Islam. Okay? Try to stick, follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and automatically things, things will become easy for us. So whatever was said and heard, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the understanding of these things also and allow us to act upon these things also. Ameen. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم سبق صغير كبير قناهك ما فرما هم سبق قولا فعلا سورة سيرة نخلاقا خلقا هر طريق سے حضور صلى الله عليه وسلم کی اتباع نصیب فرما یا اللہ مسلمان پورے عالم میں جہاں جہاں آباد ہیں ان کی ایمانوں کی جانوں کی مالوں کی آبروں کی ملکوں کی حدود کی اپنے فضل و کرم سے حفاظت فرما ہم میں جتنے بیمار ہیں سب کو اپنی روحانی جسمانی بیماریوں سے شفاء کاملہ عاجلہ نصیب فرما جتنے بے روزگار ہیں سب کو حلال روزگار مہیا فرما جتنے قرضدار ہیں سب کے قرضوں غیب سے بندوبست فرما جتنے پریشان حال ہیں سب کی پریشانیوں کو دور فرما جس کی جو بھی نیک تمنا ہے اپنے فضل و کرم سے اس کو پورا فرما یا اللہ ہمارے متعلقین جاننے والوں میں سے 
جنہوں نے بھی دعاؤں کی درخواست کی یہ دعاؤں کے متوقع ہیں اپنے فضل و کرم سے ان کے تمام مسائل کو حل فرما یا اللہ اس ملک میں ہماری اور ہماری آنے والی نسلوں کی ایمان کی حفاظت فرما سبحان رب کا رب العزت عما یصفون وسلام علی المرسلین الحمد للہ